This video quiz is all about instrument departures, and we picked a real doozy to test your knowledge of departing into the IFR system safely. We're going to be flying in California from the non-towered Corona to Palm Springs International. For our route of flight, we're going to fly to nearby Paradise VOR and then join the airway eastbound to the Palm Springs VOR, where we'll continue direct to the airport. Our first question is, assuming we're in a Cessna 172 with equipment code slant golf, meaning we have an IFR enabled GPS on board, what's the lowest altitude we should file? Not what's the lowest altitude we are allowed to file, but the lowest altitude we should reasonably file. 9,000, 13,000, 5,500, or 7,000? We'll pause a few seconds before going into the answer, and you can pause the video to think on it yourself. For this one, we should file no lower than 7,000 feet. We're slant golf with a GPS on board, so the GPS minimum and root altitude applies. That's 5,500 feet. This altitude applies to the T route T306, which we're allowed to file and fly along with our equipment. We could file 5,500 feet and meet this minimum requirement, but the best practice and thing that's most likely to get our filed altitude assigned to us is to use whole thousand foot altitude suitable for our route of flight. We're eastbound along T306. East is odd, west is even odder. So the lowest odd numbered thousand altitude is 7,000 feet. Notice that the minimums go up after the cedar intersection. It might be better to file those higher altitudes since we'll have to climb to them eventually, but the intention in flight plan filing is to use the initial altitude we intend to fly. And 7,000 is the lowest one that fits here. Corona is a non-towered field. We contact clearance delivery on the 800 number provided in the chart supplement and we're cleared as filed, including that 7,000 foot altitude. We won't get a radar vector to fly initially on departure. How should we plan our initial turn after takeoff? At 400 feet above the departure end of the runway, turn direct to the Paradise VOR, request a SID, a standard instrument departure from clearance, check the chart supplement for any departure procedures, or check the terminal procedures publication for any departure procedures. We should check the terminal procedures publication for any departure procedures. We'd normally want to start on our filed course right away, which would be to get to 400 feet and then turn direct to the VOR. But we have to see if there's a departure procedure here. This is the terminal procedures publication for Southern California. In the takeoff minimums and departure procedures section, the airport lists an obstacle departure procedure, an ODP. Again, since Corona is a non-towered airport, there's no way for us to receive a radar vector on departure to keep us clear of terrain and obstructions. We're responsible for making sure we don't smack into anything on the climb out. The ODP can help us do that. Always check for departure procedures in this section before leaving a non-towered field in IFR especially if the weather won't allow you to climb in visual conditions. First, let's look at the takeoff minimums to see if we'll be allowed to even do this procedure. Here's the current METAR information for Corona. At VX, our best angle of climb speed, we climb out at 60 knots indicated. Let's assume that's also 60 knots true airspeed. With the METAR shown, what should our climb rate be in feet per minute? 310 feet per minute, 200 feet per minute, 284 feet per minute, or 500 feet per minute? The 284 feet per minute climb rate is the lowest required. First, we need to figure out which runway we're going to use. The winds out of the east northeast favor runway 7. Runway 7 requires a ceiling of 1,000 feet with 2 miles of visibility to have a standard 200 foot per nautical mile climb gradient. The overcast layer at 700 feet is too low for that. But if we could satisfy a standard takeoff minimum, which for a single engine aircraft calls for only a half mile of visibility or better, we could still do the ODP. We just have to make a better climb gradient, 310 feet per nautical mile through 1700 MSL. The 10 miles of visibility here more than satisfy the requirements for standard takeoff minimums. Now we have to convert the 310 feet per nautical mile into a climb rate in feet per minute. We need to know our ground speed for that. We mentioned a climb out at 60 knots, and with a headwind of 5 knots, should expect a ground speed of 55. Now we divide our ground speed by 60 and take that result and multiply it by our climb gradient of 310 to get a climb rate of about 284 feet per minute. 
This should be absolutely no problem for our Cessna, so we have a green light for the procedure. Let's go through the actual procedure itself. Taking off on runway 7, we have a slight left turn, but basically a direct 4 mile route to our first waypoint, the Paradise VOR. A look at our POH tells us that a climb out with a distance of 4 miles will have us gain 2,000 feet of altitude. From our takeoff elevation, this puts us at about 2,500 feet MSL. If we plan to reach 2,500 MSL as we arrive at the Paradise VOR, what should we do when passing over the VOR? Continue our climb as we proceed on our cleared course, make a parallel entry and climb in a hold up to 6,700, make a direct entry and climb in the hold to 4,000, or make a parallel entry and climb in the hold to our cleared altitude, which was 7,000 feet. There are a bunch of steps to figuring this one out, so take your time before we look at the answer. We should enter a hold, making a parallel entry, and then climb in the hold up to 6,700 feet. The instructions for the procedure depend on our direction of flight after the Paradise VOR. We'll be joining T-306 and flying eastbound, a course of 078 degrees. Let's read. For aircraft departing the Paradise VOR from the 091 radial, that's here, clockwise through the 140 radial, which is here, so we're referring to the aircraft that are departing the VOR within this area, as well as aircraft departing from the 231 radial here, clockwise through the 280 radial here, or in this area, we should climb on course. If our route took us through these areas, we would simply keep climbing as we flew through our cleared route. No obstacles to worry about in those regions, evidently. However, our aircraft isn't flying through those regions, so that instruction doesn't apply. Let's keep reading. All others continue climb in a holding pattern. It would seem that for routes like ours that don't fit those regions before, there are obstacles preventing us from continuing on course before reaching a safe altitude. We'll have to keep climbing in a safe holding pattern. We should hold northeast of the VOR, making right turns with a 210 inbound course. Let's draw the holding pattern. It starts with a 210 degree inbound course here. With right turns, the rest of the hold looks like this. A parallel entry works best here, though a teardrop entry wouldn't hurt either. What altitude should we climb to in this hold until we can be safe to continue on course? Again, it depends on what our direction of flight is. For flights departing the VOR from the 141 radial here, clockwise through the 230 radial in this region, we should stay in the hold through 4,000 feet. That's not us though, we're in an area bounded by the 281 radial clockwise through the 090 radial, which covers our departure along the 078 radial and we should climb in the hold up to 6,700. So that's the step-by-step -step on how we determine what to do when reaching the Paradise VOR. It's a parallel entry, and we stay climbing in the hold to 6,700. Now let's say we complete the inbound turn in the hold, and we're just coming up on 6,700 feet. We should turn left immediately to intercept T-306, level off and pass over the VOR before turning left on T-306, Continue the climb to our cleared altitude and pass over the VOR before turning left on T-306. Or remain in the hold until reaching cleared altitude and then turn to intercept T-306. We need to keep climbing and we shouldn't turn to T-306 until passing over the VOR again, despite the fact that we've gotten past our safe altitude of 6,700 feet. Note the language in the instruction says to cross the PDZ Vortac at or above 6700. We're not safe to depart the hold from any point we want as soon as we're past 6700. We have to get to the station. Also, we shouldn't stop the climb here, but continue to our cleared altitude, which we said was 7000 feet. So we keep climbing to that, and when passing the VOR, turn left on course. If you got all these correct, give yourself a huge pat on the back, because this is among the tougher ODPs out there. If you struggle, don't worry. Many procedures are a bit more straightforward than this, but if you go through this one again and understand it, you'll be really well equipped to master departure procedures at other airports. Let us know how you did in the comments and check out all our Flight Insight Ground Schools at the link here or in the description.